Hello guys and welcome to another episode. Today we are featuring the MSI 4070Ti. So guys, few things that I want to mention about this GPU right here. Definitely, this is your foot in the door for the 40 series from NVIDIA. Uh, of course, you're not going to be getting the high amount of crazy performance that you would be otherwise getting for a 4090 series, but definitely for the amount of money that you are going to spend, you are going to see some return on your investment and you're going to get great performance and, uh, well, great efficiency, I should say, especially compared to the last, um, well, generation. I am definitely a freak when it comes to performance and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have a video about the Intel A750 that you can definitely check up here, where you will see that decreasing in size for the GPU, so dropping from the 8 nanometer node to down to the 6 nanometer, which was that card, uh, you will see some performance in comparison to the 3090, which was on the 8 nanometer node, and this is a 4 nanometer node GPU die, so I would definitely expect some, uh, well, increase in performance for, uh, of course, increase in efficiency unless you have a very tiny teeny eeny teeny teeny beeny teeny teeny eeny teeny beeny teeny cheapy <laughs> for it <laughs> so bullet points important notes and otherwise uh, aspects of this gpu first of all it is a dual size slot gpu that's because well it is not as thick as others but it is definitely a thick boy and that means that you are actually going to take up about uh, just half the space in between the pci express ports on your motherboard so yeah this falls in uh, well roughly in the tool slaughter for its size what about the elephant in the room the 12 pin connector of course you're going to get a 12 pin connector we're talking about the 40 series and this is something that's being included with all the 40 series lineup and probably moving forward from here don't write about the 12-pin connector, it could be a blessing in disguise because of course with the additional, uh, well, additional port there it can communicate directly with the PSU through the help of your CPU and software and in theory anyway it should be better managing its power rails and you should be getting better efficiency out of your GPU. Not only that but this is not a very intense and high power drawing GPU, this is only rated at 285 watts which is plenty if you're planning to use a normal GPU let's say with a two 8-pin connectors and uh, of course you're getting the 12 pin connectors right here that it's also being used for the 4090 series and we know that that is the beast and the behemoth and uh, well this is just drawing half that power so it should be more than plenty and more than safe to use with your 4070 Ti. Other than that, plastic on the front, plastic everywhere, plastic here, plastic fans, plastic shroud, plastic, 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 plastic everywhere on the front of the GPU and no LEDs so don't try to make your PC case nice with adding a brand new 4070 in there because you're not gonna get the extra stylish points for LEDs. No LEDs. No LEDs, no extra points. I'm sorry guys. Man, but what about the backplate of this GPU? This is a 40 series for crying out loud. Well, threat not guys, this is anodized aluminum and should be getting a lot of heat away from your PCB because, well, first of all, it is a pass-through design and second of all, this is only a 285 watt CDP GPU and with the help of the three huge fans on the back, it should be helping to dissipate plenty of that heat away from your GPU. So yeah, you are getting a quote-unquote metal backplate for your GPU with the 40 series. One very nice thing that I see with this GPU, probably it's included with the rest of the 40 series GPUs, I don't have my hands on one of them yet, but I will in the future. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more coming up next. Another very nice feature I see with this GPU right here, it is an added bracket that is being added of course for extra support. So that goes through your heatsink PCB and the back of the backplate right here to add extra stability to your GPU. I'm pretty sure this carries over to the rest of the 40 series lineup and I wish this would have been the case for the 30 series, but unfortunately it was not. No sagging issues whatsoever with this GPU right here because Nvidia was kind enough to include this metal support bracket with this uh, product right here. And on top of the already mentioned uh, added support in the GPU itself, you're getting this bracket. So definitely no way in hell you're going to get any sagging out of this GPU. Cables. Of course, you're getting this adapter included in the box. So of course, this is a two 8-pin connector adapted to the output of this GPU, which is the 12-pin connector right here. This is actually very well built, it's rugged, it's sturdy, you should not fret about it. I know you've seen all the videos out there with the all sorts of issues with this connector. Don't worry, once again, I can't stress this enough, this is a not a very high intensive uh, workload GPU, so it only goes up to 285 watts. 
and you should not be having any sort of issues. Think of it this way, the same connector goes into the box with the 4090 which is a power horse of a GPU and a very power hungry GPU at that and uh, well of course this being the same cable that goes with your 4070 Ti you should be more than fine with just using it with your 4070 Ti. Nvidia would have not included it in the kit if it would have been good enough. But I'm pretty sure you have seen all the videos with people complaining about fires and melting and all the sort of issues with this connector right here. The problem is not the connector itself. The cables are flexible and that's very good. They should be flexible to allow for the routing of the cables to go in your PC case. The only problem is not to put any sort of strain on this connector itself. So my advice to you guys is once you've set this connector into your GPU, make sure it's seated all the way. It has a very little minute tab over here. So make sure that this tab goes in all the way and it's seated properly inside the GPU and just try not to take it out a bunch. Just leave it in there, make sure that there's no stress on this connector itself and you should be plenty good to go and safe to go and use this GPU anywhere. Enough it's enough, let's throw some games at it and see exactly how it performs. So this is Dying Light 2 running at 1440p, everything's set on Ultra and uh, well, it looks incredible actually. Uh, it's really smooth and what I like about it is above this, well, apart from the fact that it's running over 60 FPS right now, we're reaching around 90 FPS here and there. Uh, it is doing so at 220, 30-ish watts, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, you can really see the power of this 4 nanometer uh, GPU die in there. Um, well, I should say the thickness of the um, silicon. But uh, yeah, I'm just comparing this to the 3090. So I will be having a review coming up next about the 3090 in comparisons with the 4070 Ti. And you'll definitely see that the 3090, well, uh, yeah, it's 8 nanometer um, generation silicon. It's definitely achieving the same level of performance in 1440p, but at around 420 watts, which is insane. It's, a, it's like double the amount of power. Uh, for the same amount of performance so i could say that i'm definitely impressed with the way uh, how this gpu feels and runs and it's definitely quite smooth i don't have any sort of issues although we're running the ray tracing here and there um well <laughs> there's a cloud there so no ray tracing here but uh yeah anyway ray tracing is enabled in this game and it is running i, I would say fabulously fantastic actually Let's bump it up a notch and go all the way up to 4K and see exactly how this puppy can handle things. So we were running just uh, shy of 90 FPS uh, before, hence, so let's see with 4K. Uh, yeah, it dropped considerably. Uh, I would say like it lost half its frame rate, but we're still running, uh, well, high 40s. Uh, high 40s for this title with a 1470 uh, Ti running at just shy of 11 gigabytes of memory as you can see there we're sitting at just 10.4 but it's running smooth uh, there's no uh, judderness or staggerness or whatever you want to call it uh, it's, it's running fine it's running smooth it's, it's good we're outdoors uh, you can definitely see all the effects the LSS is enabled of course and we are running ray tracing same as before everything is set on ultra and it moves quite well. Uh, it even bumped up its power I see there a little bit. It's uh, just shy over 250 watts here and there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, just negligible I could say. Anyway, it's running smooth even at 4K with all these uh, graphical settings set to uh, high, which is very nice to see from the GPU. And I'm pretty happy at least with Dying Light 2. Okay, so this is 1440p Cyberpunk 2077, everything set on Ultra with ray tracing set to Psycho. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, we're at 70, well, if we look upwards, of course, it's around 80, but anyways, uh, just normal play, it's around 70 to, well, mid 70s to maybe high 80s here and there or I should say high 60s to mid 70s. Anyway, that's around the FPS that you can get with this GPU. I'm pretty happy with its temperatures. Uh, it's sitting at around, well, just 65-ish degrees Celsius, which is really nice. And just look at that GPU clock. I mean, it's just sitting at 2,820 megahertz. That's insane. Uh, it's really nice. It's using around 200-ish uh, watts of power, which is absolutely insane for the performance it's delivering. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I'm a happy camper, I can say. If this runs Cyberpunk so well at 1440p, 
we should be getting i think the 30 fps that we're looking for at least 30 fps with 4k running uh well cyberpunk um yeah this being said let's move over bump up the resolution and see exactly how this puppy can handle 4k in cyberpunk Cyberpunk 2077 running 4K with this guy right here. Well, I'm surprised to say that running Dying Light before uh, actually used up more memory than uh, Cyberpunk is. Um, but anyway, we're just shy of 10 uh, gigabytes of video memory allocated for this game. And uh, well, the temps creeped up a little bit. Uh, well, just low 70s. Uh, we still have the same GPU clock, 2800 megahertz. And we're right now reaching over 260, just shy of 270 watts for this GPU, for the performance that is delivering us. Um, it feels smooth. It, it feels okay. I don't know. It's not the most buttery experience. The, I don't know, the monitor might not help me so much or do it so much justice, but it definitely feels okay. And we have just uh, over 40 FPS, so that's pretty, pretty fine. Some people are more than content with having 30 FPS uh, for 4K or above for, uh, 30 FPS. And we definitely get that with this card. So that's pretty nice to see. Uh, yeah, this is what the 4070 Ti can give you in terms of performance for, uh, well, the wattage that is drawing. And I'm pretty happy. Guys, thank you so very much for choosing to watch today's video with me. You're absolutely amazing. And if you want to see more videos coming down in the near future, a sub to the channel will be absolutely fantastic. And don't forget to ring that notification bell. And of course, leave your thoughts and comments down in the box below. I always go through each and every one of them to, uh, well, how to help and smooth out all your questions. Guys, stay awesome and see you in the next one.